place to lay my head at night. Church and a family, a job to Of the Holy Ghost of God. 
Here we have all things that pertain unto life and godliness. Everything you need to live for God is at your disposal. Everything I need to be ye holy as he is holy is at my disposal. I have no excuse, no excuse for not being godly and holy. It is a matter of not whether it's been appropriated to me or whether it's been acquired for me. It was acquired for me. The blood of Jesus Christ bought me and therefore bought everything for me to be everything he wants me to be. Everything. If he wanted me to be a, a, uh, uh, an acrobat, he would give me those abilities. Amen. He doesn't. He wants me to be a Christian, a child of God. That's the main thing he wants us to be. You say, well, I, I think he wants me to be a, a, a singer. Well, praise God for that. He wants you to be a Christian. And then they give you Christian songs and give you a Christian heart. Give you a Christian voice, a Christian mouth. Amen. Uh, let me say, a cussing mouth and a preaching mouth are not to be the same place. Out of the same uh, mouth, out of the same, is not to come cursing and blessing. Amen. And so if you're going to sing the songs of Zion, uh, don't go around gossiping, backbiting. Amen. If you're going to preach the gospel, don't go about talking bad about people. Oh, yeah. If you're going to teach Sunday school, I mean, you can't just do, you can't, you can't have it both ways. Now, I'm not preaching on that. I'm just saying it's been acquired for us. The blood of Christ, the death of Christ, he has paid for us to be able to have everything we need. Amen. Now, so then we found that, and how does that come from? You've got the, the Bible, the body is a temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which you have of God, you're not your own. You are bought with a price. And then we come to the therefore. This is our place. The activation. The activation is the responsibility of the Christian. We are to, it's been appropriated to us. It's been acquired for us. And it's to be activated by us. Activated by us. I said uh, that it's like turning on a switch. It's like having an electricity. You, you pay your electric bill, you expect to have electricity. You got wiring, you expect to have electricity. The electricity can get all the way to that light, but you got to turn the switch on to get it to where the light turns on. I mean, does that make sense? And the turning on the switch is our part. It's the responsibility of the same. So I want to deal with, number one, the responsibility of activation. Number two, the realm of activation. And thirdly, there is a reason for activation. And so those three thoughts, and I'm not going to be long with those, but I'm just going to give them to you. Number one, there is the responsibility of activation. Therefore, glorify God. That is a charge. That is a command. This is not God working in you at this point, but it is you working out. It's the resurrection power is at your disposal for your appropriation. It's been acquired by the precious blood of Christ, the perfect Lamb of God, and now it is our responsibility to activate it. It is to turn on that power switch, as I said, to the on position and let it work through us. Let him work through us. Not just work in us, but work through us. As you yield yourself to God as those that are alive from the dead and your members as, as instruments of righteousness, as servants of the righteousness unto holiness. This yielding is by your choice. 
your choice for one and for for one of uh, for the the one who's led by the uh, uh, by the Spirit of God, the, the one who is the child of God into the land of promise, uh, said this way: the one who led those children, he said, "Choose you this day, or choose this whom you will serve, whether it be the gods of your fathers they serve." on the other side of the flood. I mean, talking about back yonder. I'm talking about uh, back before you became a child of the Most High God. You can serve the gods of your fathers that they served on the other side of the flood. You can do that. He said, choose you this day who you will serve. Whether it be the gods of your fathers they served on the other side of the flood or the gods of the Americans, or I mean the Amorites, in whose land you dwell. There are many gods of the Americans. And I will just mention those couple of them to you. Uh, one of those happens to be uh, prosperity. Is one of the gods of the Americans. One of them happens to be pleasures. And another one happens to be passions. And they go after those things. They go headlong after those things. And that is the god of the Americans. In whose land you dwell. I know it says Amorites in your King James Bible. I just translated it into a modern English for you American people, amen. Because in the land you dwell is the American land, not the Amorite land. The Amorite back then, the Americans now. He said that you can you can chase those gods. You can go after those gods. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. This one said that to these people. He tried to get them to understand it's your choice. Choose you this day whom you will serve. If you want to serve those other gods, the gods that you served before you got saved, the gods of the society that you live in today, then go ahead and serve them. But it's your choice. You can't have it both ways. You cannot serve God and mammon. No man can serve two masters. If you want to serve these others, then serve them. But do not say I'm a child of God. Don't say I'm, because they that are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons, they are the sons of God. If you're not being led by the Spirit of God, don't tell people that you're one of the sons of God. I, I'm not trying to be mean, but that is the reality. It's our responsibility. Your responsibility, my responsibility for our own selves. You need to let your light shine. You need to let your light shine as you, you choose to come out from amongst them and and not go to the same excess of right as they go to. And you can live all out for God. Or, or you can get along, go along to get along with them. But you can't have it both ways. Is that not what he says? Therefore glorify God in your body and your spirit. Which are God. The responsibility of activation of this resurrection power is up to you. It's up to me. Ruth would so desire to live this new life, this new life, in the, this new land, and she told her precious mother-in-law, entreat me not to leave thee or to return from following after thee. For whether thou goest, I will go, and where thou lodgest, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people, and thy God, my God. Where thou diest, will I die, and there will I be buried. The Lord did so to me, and more also if aught but death part thee to me. She said, listen, I want a new life in a new land. This is what I started for. All I remember is, well, I don't remember whether she was married to uh, Piney or which one she was married to, but she was married to one of them guys that was that sick here, Piney, one of them two, and uh, and uh, that's that's what their names meant, and uh, and uh, so she was married to one of them, and, and so here she is. He's talking about 
may have been pining away as he was pining away. He might have been talking about how it was back in the day, back when he was growing up in the land that is fairer than day, in the promised land, but with the people of God and the place of God. He said, but there was a famine and daddy and mama moved us down here. But one day I was going home. She may have remembered those stories that he was telling about when he was riding uh, the camels back in, uh, in Israel and, and back in the day. And he, she says, oh, I, I want to see that. She wants to see the barley field. She wanted to see all that was going on back there. And now she had the opportunity to go for a new life and a new land. She said, don't make me go back. I want this. If this is where you're going, this is where I'm going. Can I say when I got saved, I wanted a new land and a new life. I don't want to go back. I have no desire to go back. I never left nothing back there. Except for everything I left back there. Sometimes it keeps trying to catch up to me. But thank God, it can't, it can't keep me. I'm just trying to tell you, it's a, there's a desire. How steadfastly minded are you to go all the way following none but the Holy Ghost, even unto death? Are you willing to do that? The responsibility of activation is ours. What will you do? What will you do? Will you take up the responsibility? And, the, and, and do what it says, glorify God in your body and your spirit, which are God's. But I don't just see the responsibility of activation, but I see the realm of activation. I see that realm as an outward thing and inwardly. For he makes the statement, both outwardly in your, in your body and inwardly in your spirit. It is your responsibility to give God soul control. Can I say that's S-O-L-E and S-O-U-L. Soul control. Let him control your soul. The only part of you that the Lord did not mention there is the place of your will, the place of your choice, your soul. Would you give him soul control so that he could control your spirit and your body? What will you look to? What will you listen to? What will you linger on is all up to you. But you remember that your body has been purchased by blood. It's your responsibility. The realm of this responsibility of activation is your body. What you look at, what you linger on, what you listen to. You might say, I can't help myself. I can't control my outburst of temper. I just can't say this and do that. Let me say, if we say that, we are liars. Or, marvel not that I said unto thee, you must be born again. It's been appropriated to you. It's been acquired for you. Do you believe that God, uh, the God of glory commands or challenges you to do things that you cannot do by his grace? He tells you. He tells you to glorify God. And my little outburst or your little outburst, your little indiscretion or my little indiscretion does not glorify God. When we say I cannot control my outburst or I cannot control my eyes, I cannot control my ears and, and my thoughts, you can cast down imaginations. You have a choice. I have a choice. You might say, well, all things are lawful unto me. All things are lawful unto me. Well, let me say, but all things are not expedient. You might be saying, oh, my friend, all things are lawful for me. But he finishes that up. But I will not be brought under the power of any. 
Why? Because I'm living under the resurrection power in my body. The context of this, uh, all things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful unto me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. The context of this is dealing with the belly, dealing with the bed, and dealing with bringing brothers to the bench of law. He said on those things, I can control myself. I have an ability. The intent is to show that bodily appetites are to be under soul control of the one who controls the soul. Right. If you let him. Yeah. If you let him. He'll enable you. The question is, are you yielding to him? Are you presenting your body a living sacrifice to him? Are you allowing him to have his way? Know you not that they which run a race run all? But one receiveth the prize. So run that you may obtain. And every man that striveth for mastery is temperate in all things. If you do not get your rest at night, that's your fault. That's right. Most of the time. I'm not talking about there's sometimes an emergency comes up and you have to stay up. But when you stay up late doing things, you just doing things to have fun, and you know you got to get up the next morning. Look for work or for church or for school or whatever you get up for. Don't say, oh, I, 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 I just, you're not striving for masteries. You don't want to be a good Christian. He, he said you're temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crowd. But we, an incorruptible. He says, I therefore so run, not as uncertainly, that is to say, it's like this, the fix is already in. I win. If I run the race, I win. He said, I'm certain of it. I'm certain of if I bring my body under subjection and run the race that's set before me, I am coming out victorious because I'm already more than a conqueror through him that loved me. Oh, my friend, I already am a winner. All I've got to do is run the race. I don't run uncertainly. He says, so fight I, not as one that beat at the air. I'm not shadow boxing. I'm in a battle, a real battle. I'm not only against Satan or sin as an outward enemy, but I'm against self and the me I used to be. That's what I fight against. I, the me I want to be fights against the me I used to be. And let me say, the me I am is who I yield to. I want to be like Jesus. Amen. I'm pressing toward the mark for the prize of the high calling in my body. I, yesterday, I guess it was, I talked to Melissa. I was asking her some information because I realized I put on 25 pounds. You say, oh, that's not a whole lot for in five years. That's five pounds more a year. That's going to be a whole lot if I keep on putting five pounds a year on. I want to lose 25 to 30 pounds. So I was asking her, somebody, a, a, a group out there that was going to help, uh, that said they were going to give me some ideas and, some, and give me a, a scale for my food and stuff like that. Some things that I could use that could help me just to, if I discipline myself. You can get up, let me say, you can get any workout equipment you want to and use them for a coat hanger. Amen. Y'all don't know about that stuff. How many people get them uh, treadmills and next thing you know they're hanging clothes on them? Yeah. Yeah, they certainly ain't walking on them. They get themselves a, a, a stationary bicycle and it stays stationary 
Not even the pedals move. Amen. I'm telling you, I know these people. You say, how do you know these people? I was one. I, I'm just trying to get us to understand that if you do not, you're, you're, you're in a real fight. And the fight is against you. The fight's not against Satan. He can't do anything to you unless you give place to the devil or God says he has permission. Amen. This is how this operates. But it's your choice. I'm back on the responsibility, but I'm trying to deal with the fact that I, I'm in a battle. I keep under my body and bring it into subjection. I eat as many cookies as I want to. If I only want to eat two, then I only eat two. If I say, well, what about 10? What about 10? That ain't even enough. You get that far, you may as well eat the whole box. Amen. Yes. You say, oh, preacher, don't be like that. I'm telling you. If you say I'm only going to eat two, I want to, if you say I want to get up at 4 o'clock in the morning, 4.30, 5 o'clock in the morning, listen, you ought to make sure you go to bed at night. <laughs> bring your body under subjection. Keep under my body and bring it into subjection. It's up to you. It's up to me. It's our choice, our responsibility to activate what's ours to appropriate. The, the resurrection power that's purchased for all who put their trust in him and proved the power is available. He did prove the power is available. He was raised from the dead. God has both raised up the Lord and will also raise us up by his own power. There is power over the outward actions our bodily appetite. And there is power over our inward action, our spiritual appetites. Now some people like stirring, stirring, passionate, hype in their music. And they like it in their messages. They like it when the preacher gets up, bounces around, and shouts. And listen, I, they, they say, well, that's preaching there. That's thrilling right there. They like it like that. They like it, that kind of stuff. Like, you know, the, the music and the message, etc. You can go on with the list. And they, 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 they listen to the Bible on their, on their, listen to the Bible, but they won't listen to it unless it's the dramatized version because the other way is boring. You say, I don't know them people. They exist out there. Let me say, that's a dead, that's just like a dead spirit. Mentally. Your spirit appetite wants junk food. It wants things that make you feel hyped up. It's like having getting a sugar fix. It's like a spoonful of sugar that makes the medicine go, helps the medicine go down. That's what you give to kids to get them to take the medicine. But when you know I need it, you know I need godly music. I don't need it all hyped up. I need godly preaching. I don't need it all hyped up. I want to listen to the word of God. I don't need it all worked up with a dramatized version. When you realize I need it and you really want what God has for you, that's when you're not carnal. You're saying I'm just going to get down and bear down and dig in and press toward the if you've got to have music running in your car to keep you satisfied, if you've got to have dramatized version of the Bible to listen to, ye are carnal. If the preaching you hear has to be all hyped up and the guy has to run around and dance around and shout and scream, you're carnal. You're looking for a show, you may as well watch Part of the Belly Circus, you outfit. So are you mad? I just wanted to make a Ron Garris imitation. Said you out here. Amen. 
I want to sound like them preachers that I, that all, oh, I love them. And it's not that I don't think they preach. I know men that preach and they're like that all the time. I hated it in me because I, I, I used to, I'd stand back there and I, if I was trying to stand behind the pulpit, I'd just be so bouncing and everything. And that people say, Brother Richard, you, you just can't stay and still, can you? And I said, I can. I kept asking God, God, show me how to do this. I'd rather have content than a service. I don't want to walk pews. Something wrong with it? Not a thing wrong with it. I don't want to run loud. Something wrong with it? Not a thing wrong with it. I don't want to be a shouter. I mean, I don't have a problem shouting. I can just speak softly and sound like a shout half the time. I'm not, that's not what I want. I want God. In my spirit. We're to live in the spirit to the glory of God. I just ask you this. You ever know that crowd that they want to go from camp meeting to camp meeting to camp meeting to camp meeting? You're always looking for the next camp meeting. It's like looking for the next dog pile. I've met the crowd. I've met the crowd. They went up in marriage counseling. I don't know what they're doing today. I'll just tell you they live down the road somewhere. But I watched the family. Daughter, last I knew, daughter's been married, divorced, and out of church. Last I heard, I don't know. I'm just trying to get you to understand. You can't do it by getting on the highs. Life ain't about living on a high. Trying to find the next high. That's not Christianity. Christianity is pressing toward the mark. It's bringing your body under subjection. It's our responsibility. Y'all say, I don't like this preaching because it's putting responsibility on us. <laughs> it's vital. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit. Our spirits be led by his spirit. We don't need music playing because God's put a melody in our heart. And he's put a song in our mind. We don't need somebody else's song. God's given us our own song. Amen. And it's a new song. Yeah. Thank God for the song, Brother Gary. Amen. Nothing's wrong with listening to Amazing Grace. I'm not saying there's something wrong with listening to songs. I'm saying there's something wrong when you got to have somebody else's song because you don't have your own. I preached a message years ago. Music, the maker, the taker, and the faker. And old Saul, he was faking and living on David's song. And soon after a while, that didn't satisfy enough. I'm telling you, if you need an outside source to stir your inside spirit, you're carnal or unconverted. The spirit communes with his spirit. Our human spirit communes with his spirit so we can spirit work. It's working together and it does something inside of you as his spirit gives life and livens up our spirit, quickens our mortal bodies. As it did at salvation, it does at every day as we yield ourselves. Let me say, walk in the spirit, you'll not fulfill the lust of the flesh. If we live in the spirit, let's also walk in the spirit. So I want to move from our last thought, the responsibility of activation of the resurrection power to ours. The charge is therefore glorify God. There's the realm of the resurrection power. It's both outward in our body and it's inward in our spirit. Thus bringing us to the reason for us activating the resurrection power. We belong to him. Which are God. They belong to him. G-O-D apostrophe S. We belong to him. Why should we live this way? Why should 
be activated because we're his. We're bought with a prize. We belong to somebody. We're purchased for purchase possession. Now we like the idea of possessing the Holy Spirit. Christ in you, the hope of glory. We like the idea. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. We like the idea of possessing him. We're baptized by one spirit into one body. We like the idea of he do what he does for us. That speaks of us possessing him. And the fact that he'll never leave us nor forsake us, it's our confidence. Christ is our life, for in him we have uh, we have our being, for in him was life, and the life was the light of men. He is ours. My beloved is mine. And I am his. But the bride in chapter 2, verse number 16 of the Song of Solomon, she was emphasizing, my beloved is mine. And that's how we start a relationship with Jesus. That's how we start a relationship. He's mine. He moved into me. He did for me. But then I possess this, that the fact that I possess him is followed by the fact that I'm his. We got to focus on the, the first part that I, he's mine and I'm his. But as we learn of him and as we linger with him and, and we uh, uh, lose that sweet honeymoon time, those honeymoon days, we go from seeing ourselves as just as just as his sweetheart to being his servant. We're not just his sweetheart, we're his servant also. And we say the same thing, only different. In chapter 6, she does not say, uh, beloved, my beloved is mine. She said, I am my beloved's, and he is mine. She started out early in the marriage. My beloved is mine, and I'm his. Now she's saying, I'm his, and he's mine. Oh, she's like, guess what? After I lost my uh, fire for him, and I found out that he loved me, and he wanted to be with me, I, I know I want to serve him. I'm his and he's mine. Matter of fact, I'm his and his desire is toward me is what she says in chapter 7. I want you to understand. She realized, hey, look, he's given everything that he might have me. So I'm going to give everything that I might have him. That I might enjoy him. It is no longer what I can get is that I want to give. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are his, which belong to him. It's not a treachery to serve our beloved, but it's a terrific time because I am my beloved. And his desire is toward me. I'm here for him, for he is all in it for me. My body is his for his glory. My spirit is his for his glory. He has purchased me. He has prayed for me. He provides for me. And he takes pleasure in me. Yeah. Why would I not activate what he's acquired for me? And what he has appropriated to me. When I love, now realize that he loves me more than life itself. He loved me and gave himself for me. My friend. Something ought to get you to understand. He's well worth. Sir. Yeah. He is well worth it. What he's done for us and what he's doing for us and what he's doing in us, he's well worth it. Yeah. Oh. Oh, my friend. There's a responsibility. 
to activate what he's appropriated for us or to us, what he's acquired for us. There's a responsibility to activate it in us. What are you going to do? Are you going to turn the switch so that yourself is yielded to him? Or are you just going to keep on doing your own thing and saying, oh, I'll give him a little bit here and there? That's the lie. That's the choice. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you which you have of God, you're not your own. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Father, I thank you for today. Thank you for the privilege.